السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى has revealed the Holy Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, through Sayyidina Jibreel عليه السلام and Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, wanted the Sahaba to read the Quran, to understand the Quran, and to to be uh, uh, strong in the Quran. So we all know that the more we read the Quran, the more we understand the Quran. And the more we understand the Quran, the stronger our bond will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while praying, we have uh, to read Surah Al-Fatiha each rakah. Then we read a few ayahs from any juz, from any 30, 30 uh, juz of the Quran. So the Fatiha is a must for every rakah. And the, the other surah is of your choice. So it's uh, obvious that the uh, Fatiha has a great importance. So this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ صَلَّهَا صَلَاةً لَمْ يَقْرَأْ فِيهَا بِأُمِّ الْقُرْآنِ فَهِيَ خِدَاج And he said that, ثَلَاثًا أي غير تمام so if anyone uh, observes a prayer in which he does not recite Umm al-Qur'an, it is deficient. And he said this three times. So not complete. So what is Umm al-Qur'an? Umm al-Qur'an is the Fatiha. The first uh, a surah in the Quran is called Ummul Quran, and uh, it, it, it without it, our salah will be deficient. So the salah will not be complete. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala emphasizes the importance of Surah Al Surah Al Fatiha when He specifies it in one of the surahs when He says. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِي وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ And we have certainly given you, O oh Muhammad, seven, seven, which means seven ayahs, of the often repeated ayahs and the great Qur'an. So we have given you السبع المثاني, المثاني, the seven ayahs that are repeated, which is al-Fatiha. And also, we have given you the great Qur'an. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given us this great surah to recite in each and every rak'ah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are several names for Surah Al-Fatiha. So one of the names is Ashifa, the cure. The people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friends of Allah, uh, the, uh, some of them are very blessed. And they have a special ijazah in reading Surah Al-Fatiha for someone who is sick, putting their hand on the, uh, on the painful uh, a part of the body and 
they would read Surah Al-Fatiha and they would, they would uh, recite a few du'as that are special for cure and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal that person. So Surah Al-Fatiha is called Ash-Shafiya, the cure. Another name for Surah Al-Fatiha is Ar-Ruqya, which is the remedy. Also, the remedy is another word for the cure. And as we said that it gives, it heals the person who reads it or who is read to him. Another name for uh, Surah Al-Fatiha is Alhamd, and which means praise to Allah. This surah starts with Alhamdulillah. Normally, uh, the surahs, uh, some of the surahs are called by the first few words or the first word of the surah. For example, Surah Al-Mulk is called Surah Tabarak. It starts with the word Tabarak. So, so many, so many surahs uh, are named by the first word that comes in the first ayah. So, Surah Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Fatiha is called Al-Hamd, Surah Al-Hamd, praise to Allah. Also, it is called Umm Al-Quran. The word Umm means mother. So, it's the mother of the Quran. And Umm Al-Kitab, also another name for Surah Al-Fatiha, is the mother of the book. So the, the main surah that starts the, uh, the book, that starts the Quran, is the first one, which is Surah Al-Fatiha. Also, Surah Al-Fatiha is called Al-Asas. And the word al-asas means the foundation. And it is said that Surah Al-Fatiha has the foundation of Islam. It is the foundation of Islam. It talks about uh, a lot of uh, the important uh, found, uh, uh, ideas, basic principles uh, of uh, or, uh, of the uh, Islam religion. So this is what we are going to uh, see in our hadith. Now, uh, the opening of the book shows its importance. How important, it shows its importance and how important is this book is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts his book with Surah Al-Fatiha to indicate how important this surah is. So uh, the, uh, the, the Fatiha, normally when you, when you open a book, you see that there are a few words about the whole book that summarizes the whole book. So Surah Al-Fatiha summarizes the ideas of the whole Quran. It summarizes all the main principles, all the main points that are mentioned in the Quran. Our hadith today is about Surah Al-Fatiha and how uh, important Surah Al-Fatiha is and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the person who reads Surah Al-Fatiha. So let's start with uh, the hadith. I'm going to read the hadith and then I'm going to uh, give some lights on the hadith. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله تعالى and as we mentioned earlier when we hear the words قال الله تعالى Allah says it means that we are reading hadith قدسي نعم so قال الله تعالى قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي نصفين ولعبدي ما سأل فإذا قال العبد الحمد لله رب العالمين قال الله 
حمدني عبدي وإذا قال الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى أثنى علي عبدي وإذا قال مالك يوم الدين قال مجدني عبدي ومرة قال فوض إلي عبدي فإذا قال إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين قال هذا بيني وبين عبدي ولعبدي ما سأل فإذا قال اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قال هذا لعبدي ولعبدي ما سأل ما شاء الله So Allah subhanahu the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declares that Allah the exalted has said I have divided the prayer into two halves between me and my servant. And my servant will receive what he asks. قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي نصفين ولعبدي ما سأل. So my servant will say a few words and I will say a few words. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. So when, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember that he is there listening for you and he will answer your call. Some people would say, oh, we, uh, I, made, I made so many prayers and I asked Allah for, for so many things, but Allah has never fulfilled any of my, my prayers. So why would I, why would I, Ask Allah for more. Why would I make more dua? So for this person, we say, uh, when, when you make dua, there are a few things that might happen. It's either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angels to give you what you want immediately, or he will save your dua till the day after, and the reward will be highly, highly multiplied. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will uh, save you. Allah will save you from some afflictions that might have happened to you. So Allah might accept your dua. And he might save it for you for the day after. And it is narrated that... Uh, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, uh, uh, when he was to be tried, he, he, uh, when he was to, uh, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, uh, he, sh he saw a great, big uh, uh, reward for that that's uh, kept for someone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looked at that person and he said, do you know who this is for? And he said, no, Ya Allah, I don't. He said, it's for you. And that person was so shocked because he said, what have I done, Ya Allah? And the answer was, you made so much dua and I saved it for you till the day after. And that person would, would wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had never answered any of his dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us, Ud'uni astajib lakum. And we mentioned earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends down to the lower sky before Fajr time, before the call of uh, Fajr Adhan, and he will he will ask, is there someone who is making repentance? I will accept his repentance. Is, is there someone who is asking for forgiveness? I will forgive him. Is there someone who is asking for anything? I will grant him. I will grant him this, uh, um, his wish. So try, try these blessed times 
that are before Fajr time. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, لكم, call me, pray for me, and I will answer your call. I will fulfill your wishes. But we have to know what, when, when to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what to ask for when we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ تَعَالَى حَمَدَنِي عَبْدِي So when we start reading Surah Al-Fatiha, we say, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And just a, a word about the basmala, which is saying, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullu amali la yabda'u bismillahi fa huwa abtar. Any action that you do, if you do not start it with bismillahi rahman rahim, then your action is not complete. So when we start re re reciting the Quran, we say bismillahi rahman rahim. And before it, we say, of course, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillahi rahman rahim So when we start with bismillahi rahman rahim doing anything, uh, this means that, Ya Allah, we are starting our action with re re reciting your name. We don't have the power to do anything. You are the one who gives us the power to, to do anything. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be. So, فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الحمد لله رب العالمين قال الله تعالى حمدني عبدي So when the servant says praise be to Allah the Lord of the universe Allah the most high would say my servant has praised me So now imagine yourself praying and the words that you are saying you have a conversation you have a dialogue a uh, one to one between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Allah would answer you and he says my servant has praised me now what does the word hamd mean the meaning of hamd is praise and this word comes from gratitude and hand is to acknowledge the blessings. So when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, then we are acknowledging the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are countless. Blessings, our health, our knowledge. We have a house to live in. We have family to take care of. We have, we have neighbors. We have, we are Muslims. We pray. We do things. We are good things. These are all blessings from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and we acknowledge these uh, uh, blessings by thanking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So we praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to show that we are grateful we are grateful for all the blessings that we have that we have been given a believer remembers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only when he gets a blessing uh, whenever something uh, good happens to him but even in the time of hardship he acknowledges that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him all the blessings. And he also knows and, uh, uh, that whatever hardship he is passing through could be much worse. So he, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that happens to him, whether good or bad. He thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during ease time and he thanks him during hardship. 
He thanks him during uh, Eid time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala in shakartum azidannakum. When you thank me, then I will increase you. And he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hardship because he knows that this hardship could have been much worse. So alhamdulillah that it's not worse. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has started the Holy Quran by alhamdulillah, acknowledging the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Now, so the first, the first phrase of conversation between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, my servant has praised me. Now, وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قَالَ اللَّهُ أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي So when the servant says, الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ The most compassionate, the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant has loaded me. Subhanallah. So, uh, my servant has uh, acclaimed me, has mentioned me, has exalted me, has proclaimed me by saying, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Now, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are two of the uh, uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The compassionate, the most compassionate, the merciful. And they are both derived from the word rahma. And we mentioned earlier, again, I'm repeating these few points that because they are very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided mercy into 100 portions and he descended down to earth just one portion. And this by, by this portion, we see the mom takes care of her baby. The animals take care of their babies. The people have mercy amongst each other to uh, uh, one another. So this is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended to earth. But he kept the 99 portions to the day of judgment to show us the meaning of real mercy to his uh, uh, slaves. So mercy uh, uh, is divided into two, two points. Mercy, mercy to non-Muslims and mercy to Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of his servants. And when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by uh, the mountains, uh, oh Muhammad, they, they, you people are uh, 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 opposing you, are hurting you. And this is especially after Ta'if. So if, if you want, I can crush them all. But he said, no, these are my, these are, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish that one day some of them will be Muslims. Look at the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not accept any harm for, for the people, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. And Allah will have mercy on those who are Muslims and non-Muslims. But the Rahim the uh, rahim bil mu'minin the word rahim is specifically for muslims for mu'mins for the believers for those who believed in the in uh, uh, in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and in the angels in the books the uh, messengers 
So Allah will have mercy on those people. وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي Now, the third, the third part. وَإِذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ قَالَ مَجَّدَنِي عَبْدِي وَفِي رواية أو وَقَالَ مَرَّةً فَوَّضَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي So when a person who is reciting Surah Al-Fatiha says, Malik Yawm al-Din, the master of the day of judgment, he remarks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant has glorified me. My servant has glorified me. And sometimes, or in another narration, uh, he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant entrusted his affairs to me. Now, when you say my servant, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant has glorified me, then uh, normally when you glorify, you glorify, you glorify an important thing. So when you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant has glorified me, he, so my servant says, um, uh, uh, so uh, the servant has spoken highly of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he says the master of the day of judgment, this is a big, a big uh, glorification to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that's uh, before resurrection, so everyone dies. And uh, there is only Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel of death, and Allah. So Allah talks to the uh, um, angel of death and he says, who is left? And the angel of death says, oh Allah, I took the soul of everyone except for Jibreel alayhi salam. So Allah orders the angel of death to, uh, uh, to kill Jibreel alayhi salam. So no one is left except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the angel of death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is left? And the angel of uh, death says, Ya Allah, only you and and me so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angel of death to to die so there is no one there and this is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala men mentions in surah ghafir ayah 16 when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says liman al mulk al so everyone is dead. There is no one. And Allah is asking to whom belongs everything, to whom belongs all sovereignty this day. No one to answer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Allah, the one, the prevailing. He is the owner, he is the master of the day of judgment. Also, he is the one when when uh, the servant says Maliki Yawmiddin. And the other reply from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَّضَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي So my servant entrusted his affairs to me. When you want something to happen, what, you do, what would you do? You would make dua. That's the norm. But if you would say, Ya Allah, I entrust my affairs to you. There is a special dua that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to say 
اللهم إني لا أحسن الاختيار فاخترني ولا أحسن التدبير فدبرني Oh Allah, I don't know how to uh, choose so I want you to choose for me I don't know how to manage my affairs. I want you to manage my affairs. So the sir, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with the person who's, who entrusts his affairs to him. Depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. Ask him to choose the best for you and he will do it. So. This is the third part. The first one, again, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, my, my servant has praised me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah would say, my servant has, uh, 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 my, my servant has uh, mentioned me, exalted me. And then when you say Malik Yawm al-Din, Allah would say, my servant, has glorified me my servant has entrusted his affairs to me now when we say Allah will say so when the worshiper says you do we worship and of you we ask help then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say this is between me and my servant, and my servant will receive that he asks for. So, complete servitude. Ya kanabud. We worship you, and we worship you alone, Ya Allah. We have nothing to associate with you, Ya Allah. And we seek help from you alone, Ya Allah. If you need something, you go to the person who is in charge and you talk to him. Sometimes you might need someone to talk to that person so that he would give you the exact thing that you want but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his door is open you don't need to go through anyone you would say Allah we worship you ya Allah and we want help only from you so what what's the answer to that Allah will say this is between me and my servant only. And my servant will receive what he asks for. I will fulfill his wishes. Then, فَإِذَا قَالْ اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قال الله تعالى هذا لعبدي ولعبدي ما سأل So when the worshiper or when the serv uh, servant of Allah would say guide us to the straight path اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Which path? The path of those whom you have to whom you have been gracious. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. And who is the guided person? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the last of the, the seed of the prophets, the last of the prophets. So when we follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we are on the straight path. We are on the right path. 
that would lead that path would lead to the the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, what is this straight path? It is the path that has been illuminated by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for us. Because one of the names of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a nur. And when you want to go into a path, you need to have nur, you need to have light. So this light comes from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He explained this religion for us. And he taught us how to follow him. He talked about being good to people. He talked about be, having the best morals to people. He taught us how to pray, how to pay zakah, how to perform hajj, how, how to take care of the elders, how to take care of our parents, how to take care of the young, how to be of good manners. He enlightened the path for us. And when we have light and lure, then our path will be easy to follow. But if you don't have any light, if there is no light, then how can we, how can we go through that path? It's not easy. It's so difficult. So what we have to do is we have to connect ourselves to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to connect our hearts to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how can we do that? The easiest way or the shortcut for this is to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you connect your heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every day. Morning and night. So in the morning, do at least 100 salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At night, do at least 100 salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you started your day with salawat and you ended your day with salawat. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever in between these salawat will be khair for me, will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are seeking the uh, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want Allah to be pleased with you. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make you of the winners in the day of judgment. Then work on your heart. Because when we have a sound heart, then everything is, is easy. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a sound heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts with the light of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the light of the Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path, this path whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. The path of those to whom you have been gracious to those you have blessed, to those who followed you, to who followed your beloved messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because those are the winners on the day of judgment. They will be under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At a time that everyone would wish to be under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even, even prophets. So this is the path that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. Those whom you have bestowed your blessings upon. Ghayr al alayhim. Not those who have gone astray. 
sorry, غير المغضوب عليهم, those whom have incurred your displeasure. So, Allah is not, is not happy with these people. We don't want the path of those people. And not those who have gone astray. No, we don't want to follow those people. We want to follow the, the, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ac accepts. And this reminds us of a very important uh, principle of life. Be with good people. عاشر من ينهضك إلى الله حاله ويدلك على الله مقاله. Be with the people when when you sit with them, then they remind remind you of Allah سبحانه وتعالى with their words, with their actions, with whatever they do. You remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Remember سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. ويدلك على الله مقاله. When they say words. Then they will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With these people, you will be saved. Because it said, As-sahib sahib. The companion withdraws the other person. So if he is good, then he will draw his friend to whatever is good. But if he is bad, then he will draw his person, his companion, to whatever is bad. Each one of them, the good and the bad, want their companions to taste what they are enjoying. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide us with good companions who will help us along the way because we know along the way we won't have easy everything uh, uh, everything easy but there will be tests and trials we have to have good companions that who will encourage us when we when we stumble they will take our hand and lift us up when we uh, slip, they will take our hand and lift us up. Those are the true companions that we have to be with. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide our kids with good companions. Now imagine this situation that we are living in. We are scared that someone will drag our children with, uh, to the wrong direction. And that's why moms should always be models to their children and should always make dua that Allah saves their children. And do not belittle the power of dua of the mother who makes dua to her children. Do not belittle that. So be generous. Make as much dua to your children as you can. So when someone says, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, this is for my servant. He's asking for to be guided to the right path. And my servant will receive what he asks for. So, how many times do we read Fatiha every day? Two in Fajr, four in Dhuhr, four times in Asr, three times in Maghrib, and four times in Isha, three times in Witr. So this is 17 times. That's without still uh, doing the uh, extra nafil salawat. So, so we read Surah Al-Fatiha 17 times. We have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 17 times every day. 
Imagine. Now when we are when we will pray, we will have a different understanding to the to the to Surah Al Fatiha. We will be thinking, oh, I'm saying Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, my my servant has praised me. So when you think of what you are saying and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding back to you, then your mind will be engaged fully in salah. You will not be thinking of anything else. Now you are in true conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will focus more on your prayers. Subhanallah. Prayer is the foundation of this religion. Uh, and in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَةِ those who perform the prayer. He did not say, الَّذِينَ يُصَلُّونَ Those who pray. Because praying is not just movements. It is, it is thinking of what you are reading. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make us focus on our uh, prayers and to be fully engaged with our prayers to save us and to save our children, to provide us with good companions, to provide our, our children with good companions. And we uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that we have, uh, that we have, that he has given us. And we say, Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And until we meet, inshallah, next, next week, I would like to send uh, your salam and my best salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.